Alright, welcome to Blender 101, Getting Started with Blender. For this entire DVD, we're learning animation using Blender, the great free, open source 3D application. To be able to follow the rest of this DVD, you'll need to know some basics first. This video will help you get up and running quickly with Blender. If you already know how to use the basic tools, you can skip this tutorial and move on to the next video. Blender is available on this DVD or on Blender.org. You can run Blender on all the major platforms including Mac OS X, Linux and Windows. Over the next 10 minutes I will cover view manipulation, selecting, moving, rotating and scaling, creating screen layouts, adding objects and inserting keyframes. And this is all you need to know to get started with animation in Blender. I'm not going to cover any modeling or animation in Blender. Information on this can be found elsewhere on the web or on other DVDs. First off, this is a mouse. The left mouse button is used to perform gestures and to confirm events and click buttons. The middle mouse button is used for view manipulation. And the right mouse button is used for selecting. And you'll probably find this a little unusual as most applications use the left mouse button for selecting. Hopefully you will quickly get used to this new paradigm. And now this brings me to the golden rule in Blender. Always have one hand on the mouse and the other hand on the keyboard. There are many useful shortcuts that you can learn and remember to speed up your workflow. Let's look at how you manipulate the view. To rotate around the view, click and drag using the middle mouse button. To zoom in, hold down Control and drag down. To pan around, hold down Shift and drag around also using the middle mouse button. Let's try this out. This is how Blender looks when you first fire it up and you'll see it has a cube, a camera and a lamp. To look around, click and drag holding the middle mouse button and move the mouse around. You can see that we can look around the scene using this technique. To move closer to the cube, hold down control and drag down. And to move further away, we hold down control and drag up using the middle mouse button. If you hold down shift and drag, we can pan around the scene. And using a combination of these techniques, we can look around and view the scene from any angle. The next important thing that you really need to know is that you can quickly jump from the front view to the side view and to the top view by pressing 1, 3 and 7 on the numeric keypad. Alternatively, you can do the opposite by holding shift, so that you can go to the back, the other side, and also the bottom. To turn perspective on and off, press the 5 key. Here I'm going to the front view using 1, the side view using 3, and the top view using 7. This is a very quick way of moving around in the scene. I can also do the opposite by holding shift and pressing 1, 3 and 7. Now I'm going to show you the effect of turning on and off perspective. Now you'll see perspective is turned off. This is actually very useful because you can much more accurately judge the relative sizes of objects. Now let me talk about selecting. Right now you can see the default cube is selected, but we can also select the camera by right clicking on it. Let's select the lamp and let's go back to the cube. You can also select multiple objects by shift clicking on them. Now let's move to translation. The key phrase here is GSR, which stands for grab, scale and rotate. 
Let's move around the default cube in Blender. Make sure it's selected and hit G to move it around on the screen. Left click to confirm. We can also rotate it by hitting R and rotating the cursor around the object. Hit left click to confirm. We can also make the object bigger or smaller by hitting S. To make these sorts of things easier in 3D, we can turn on this little 3D manipulator, which lets us move around the object per axis. This also works for scaling and rotating. The way the Blender user interface is divided up can be changed. Let's make something a little more optimal for animation. We'll add a timeline, an outliner for selecting objects, and the action editor for manipulating keyframes. We can make the bottom area of the screen down here a timeline. Click this little button and select Timeline. Let's make it smaller. To add an outliner on the left side of the screen, right click on this little divider, select Split Area and set the edge. Click this icon and select Outliner. To add an action editor on the right side, right click on the dividing line and select Split Area. Click this icon and select Action Editor. We'll also need some buttons, so let's right click on this dividing line, split the view and select Buttons window. We can make this area vertical if you right click and select Vertical. This is a great default view for working with animation. To save this, so that it always opens up like this, hit Ctrl U and save the user defaults. Let's add some more objects into the scene. We can delete the default cube by making sure it's selected and hitting X. To add more objects, either go to the Add menu in the top of the screen, or hit the spacebar. Let's go to Add, Mesh, Monkey. This will add a monkey to the scene. When you add new objects, Blender puts us into Edit Mode, which is where you change the shape of objects. This is outside the scope of this tutorial, however, but you can find information on this on the web. Let's go back to Object Mode. Now we can move this monkey around just like we moved the cube around by using G, S and R to rotate, scale and move the object around. Let's insert some keyframes. To insert keyframes in Blender, use the I key. However, you can imagine if you have a big character with lots of bones, this quickly gets impractical. Instead, we'll turn on keyframe recording. This basically means that Blender inserts the keyframes for you. I'll show you how to do this in Blender. To turn on keyframe recording, press this little record button. Now, whenever you move, rotate or scale the object, it inserts a keyframe. Let's move forward in time on the timeline. Go to frame 40 and move the monkey around, scale it and rotate it. It automatically inserts a keyframe. And when we move back and forward in time, you can see that it's moving between those two states. We can add a third state later on in time by moving, rotating and scaling the object. And you'll see it's animating between those three states. And that's all you need to know. Whenever you're ready, go on to the next video. Thanks.